Hello, and thank you so much for tuning into our March virtual snack class. My name is Barbara, and I'm the dietitian at the ShopRite of Emerson. So, since March is known for St. Patrick's Day, I thought it would be fun to choose two green-themed recipes. So we are going to be making green cream cheese and a green frozen yogurt bark. So, first things first, let's get started on the green cream cheese. And I'm going to go over all the ingredients that you're going to need for this recipe. You are going to need two ounces of softened cream cheese. I like using Neufchatel just because it has one third less fat than regular cream cheese. You are going to need a quarter cup of fresh baby spinach. Make sure it's nice and washed and dried before you start this recipe. You are going to need one little pinch of black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, one piece of whole wheat bread, bagel, whatever you wanna spread the cream cheese on. I'm using whole wheat bread about half of a mini cucumber and it's going to be end up being about one tablespoon of scallion so let's get started first things first make sure your cream cheese is nice and softened because if it's not it's going to be a little too hard to mix so if you just took your cream cheese out of the fridge i would suggest maybe waiting about a half an hour before starting this recipe so the first thing that we are going to be doing for our green cream cheese is taking our baby spinach and removing all of these little stems. Super simple, just like that. And then set these aside because we don't need them. And do that with all of your spinach. And what I'm doing, and I want you to do this too, lay the spinach leaves on top of each other. So we're gonna be making a nice little stack of spinach leaves. So make sure you do that with all of your spinach. Make sure there's no stems. If you get some leaves that already don't have a stem, just add them right to your little stack. If your stack falls over, that's perfectly okay. Just start another one next to it. Okay, so now you see I have a nice little stack of spinach. What you're gonna now do is roll it up into a little burrito. I'm going to be showing you a specific type of cutting technique. If your burrito is a little too fat and too hard to hold, you can take some of the spinach out and put it in your next pile. But basically, you want your spinach leaves to be a nice, tight little burrito like this. Next thing you're going to do is take your butter knife. Make sure it's a butter knife or another child safe knife because real knives are dangerous. And we are going to start cutting our little spinach burrito lengthwise like this. Can you see what I'm doing? I think you can. Basically cut really, really thin strips because that's about, about as thin as we want it. And you're going to keep cutting your little spinach burrito into these little thin strips. This is a cutting technique called chiffonading. Very, very big fancy word. All it really means is we're cutting our spinach into little thin ribbons. Let me just see if I can show the camera. So here's my little spinach burrito. I'm just cutting a really, really thin strip just like that, right down the line. And be very careful of your fingers and do this to your whole spinach burrito. Okay. Let me see if I can show the camera. You see how, how I have all these little thin strips of spinach? That's exactly what we want. The smaller, the better. And then do that if you have a second stack of spinach. Once again, you're gonna roll it into a little 
burrito. So you're gonna have a little burrito like that and you're gonna cut them like this all the way down until the whole burrito's gone into really nice thin strips. Perfect. And once I'm done, I'll show the camera what it looks like again. Okay. So you can see how all of my spinach is shredded into these nice little ribbons. That's exactly what we want. And then you are going to add your nice chiffon knotted spinach to your cream cheese bowl. Okay. Perfect. Get all that nice spinach into the cream cheese. Perfect. So now all your spinach is now in your cream cheese bowl. Next thing we're going to do is take our little piece of scallion or green onion and we're just going to chop it into really thin slices all the way down the scallion. I'm going to cut a little piece and I'm going to show you. Come on. Okay. So see how I have a nice little thin piece of scallion right there? So you're just going to keep cutting all the way down your scallion. This is a really, really delicious cream cheese recipe that gets some veggies in, you get some protein from the cream cheese and some dairy in, and it tastes amazing. Basically just keep cutting all the way down your scallion, also known as a green onion. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to show the camera what it looks like. See how all of my green onion is nice and chopped up? In total, you should have about one tablespoon worth of scallion. And you are going to add it right into your cream cheese bowl. Maybe use your butter knife to scrape from the cutting board into the bowl. Perfect. So now in this bowl, we have our cream cheese, our spinach, and our scallions. Next thing we want to do is add a little pinch of black pepper. And I really mean a pinch. See how much I have? It's really not a lot. Just one pinch. And then you are going to add your quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. If you really like garlic, you can add a little bit more if you'd like, or if you prefer none of these seasonings, that's totally fine. Now here we have our black pepper, garlic powder, scallion, spinach, and cream cheese. And we are going to take our butter knife and give this a good mix. You want it all nice and incorporated. The spinach and the scallions are what's making our cream cheese green. If you notice that your cream cheese is a little too firm because you didn't let it sit out long enough, maybe pop it in the microwave for about five seconds at a time. You don't want to melt it. You just want it soft enough that you can mix. Wow, this looks and smells amazing. Keep stirring until it's all nice and incorporated together. Great. So that's what mine looks like. It's all nice and incorporated and it's so nice and green. I don't know if the camera can pick it up that well, but this is our green cream cheese. Next thing you're going to do is take your whole wheat bread or whatever you decided to use and if you want, you can toast it. I toasted mine prior to recording. And you are going to take your cream cheese spread and spread this all over your bread. Make sure you get all of that cream cheesy goodness onto your toast. 
Once again, this is a really super simple recipe and it makes a perfect after school snack or breakfast or whenever you wanna eat it. Okay, so now that all your cream cheese is on your bread, give it a nice spread so you're touching all of the bread. You wanna cover the whole surface with this cream cheesy goodness. This looks so delicious. I wanna make sure it's nice and even. Okay. So see how my cream cheese is nice and evenly spread? I don't know if the camera can see that very well, but yeah, all of my nice green cream cheese is all over my toast. Now, the next step, this is the final step that we're gonna do to decorate our green cream cheese. We are gonna take our half of our mini cucumber and we are gonna cut out four thin slices. I'm gonna cut one and then I'm gonna show you. See, not too thick, not too thin. We want four slices just like that. Actually, you know what? Cut out five slices, and I'll tell you why we need five in a second. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. You can set aside the rest of the cucumber and eat that as a snack later, because we don't need that right now. So, now that we have our five slices of cucumber, we are going to take one of them and cut it just like this. Okay, you see that? Just like that. I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna show you. It's not really down the middle, just like that. And I'll show you why in a second. So, next we're gonna take our green cream cheese toast and we are gonna take our four cucumber slices. Let's see if I can make you see that better. I know the light's making it a little hard to see. But we are going to arrange our cucumbers on the toast just like this. Okay, let me see if I can show you. See that? The four pieces of cucumber are all right next to each other. And then we are gonna take our little piece with our skin side up and place it right between the bottom two cucumbers. So we made a little four leaf clover with a stem. How cute is that? Perfect for St. Patrick's Day. And with that, this recipe is over. You can either pause the video and eat this now or move on to the next recipe with me. I'm just gonna clean up my area a little bit. Great. Great, great, great. Now we are going to move on to our green frozen yogurt bark. Okay, so for this recipe, you're going to need about half a cup of vanilla Greek yogurt. I'm using Chobani. You're gonna need about one teaspoon of honey and you are going to need a quarter cup of green fruits. I'm gonna be using kiwi. You can use kiwi, grapes, cantaloupe, all three, oh, not cantaloupe, I'm sorry, honeydew. You can use all three if you want. You just wanna make sure whatever fruit you're using is green. I love kiwis and plus they're nice and cheap, so that's why I'm gonna use kiwi. Okay. First things first, once again, make sure your produce is nice and washed. I washed this before starting. I'm gonna cut the kiwi right in half. Look at that pretty green color. It's so perfect for St. Patrick's Day. And now I'm going to show you a really cool way to peel kiwis. So here I have half of a kiwi and I'm gonna take my spoon and stick it right in the fruit 
right by the skin. Can you see that? Right underneath the skin. And then you rotate, oh gosh, around the kiwi. Look at that, look how easily it's getting peeled. Look at that, so simple way to get all of that yummy kiwi out of the peel. Let me see if I can show you that one more time. You're gonna take your spoon, take your kiwi, stick your, ki your spoon into the kiwi right underneath the skin and rotate. Can you see that? Just keep rotating all around the fruit and the skin should just come right off. If your kiwi's not ripe, it might be a little hard, but mine is nice and ripe and perfect for this. Look at that, so clean, perfect. Okay. Now, whatever fruit you're using, if you're using grapes, cut them in half. If you're using honeydew, cut them into bite-sized pieces. What I'm gonna do now is cut up my kiwi in whatever shape I like. Since my kiwi is round, I think I'm gonna cut them into slices similar to how we did the cucumber so I can make that same four leaf clover design. Actually, maybe not because it doesn't look like my kiwi wants to cooperate. That's okay. It's still gonna be green and delicious. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give up on the slices and just cut up my kiwi. <laughs> Since my kiwi is so ripe and it's nice and soft, it's kind of just falling apart. I don't even really have to cut it. That means it's gonna be super nice and sweet. Perfect. So whatever kind of green fruit you're using, make sure it's in nice bite-sized pieces. Next thing you wanna do is take a medium-sized mixing bowl and take your Greek yogurt and pour your half-cup Greek yogurt right into your mixing bowl. Perfect. Great. So once your Greek yogurt is in your mixing bowl, you are going to take your one teaspoon of honey and add it right into the Greek yogurt. I'm eyeballing it, but you can use measuring spoons if you're not that good at eyeballing. So here I have my honey in my Greek yogurt and I'm gonna give it a good mix until it's all nice and incorporated. I don't wanna see any streaks of honey. Great. Okay, let's see if you can see that. Probably not, that's okay. But all of my honey is now nice and mixed into my Greek yogurt. Next thing, you want to take a baking tray and line it with parchment paper. There's a reason for this. The parchment paper is gonna prevent this from sticking. So make sure you have a pan lined with parchment paper. I think wax paper would work too, but I would say use parchment paper just because I know for a fact that's gonna work. So you are going to take your Greek yogurt and pour it directly onto your parchment paper on your baking tray. Also make sure that this tray, whatever tray you're using, is small enough to fit in your freezer. I made that mistake once or twice. <laughs> And then spread out your Greek yogurt into a nice thin layer. You want it about a quarter inch thick. That way it's not too thin and brittle, but also not too thick that you can't break it in half once it's nice and frozen. And you can put this into whatever shape you want. I'm just doing a circle just cause it's easier. But just spread it out nice and even. See if I can show the camera. So see how I have a nice even layer of Greek yogurt? Perfect, I think the camera can see that. That's exactly what we want, a nice quarter inch thick layer of Greek yogurt. 
and then you are going to take your green fruit and sprinkle it all over the yogurt. Whatever fruit you're using, as long as it's green. Perfect. This looks so good already. You want to make sure that the fruit is in the yogurt. Otherwise, it's not going to stick. And you know, just spread it out nice and even so that way each bit of yogurt has a little bite of fruit. Perfect. Okay, let me show the camera. So now you can see my frozen yogurt is covered in my green kiwis. What you want to do next is pop this in the freezer for about two to four hours. I've, I've had mine set in about two hours, but if your freezer is not as cold, you know, four hours might be a little better. But once it is nice and frozen that you can pick it up and it's nice and solid, you can break it into bite-sized pieces. Just make sure to keep it stored in the freezer, otherwise it's going to melt. But that's it. We got our two green inspired recipes. We have our green cream cheese and our green frozen yogurt bark. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.